laying down it fell down off of the tree right here came down hit the ground and it's set there. The hive exists in this trunk here. A week ago, I took a call to go collect a swarm from uh, a farm. But when I got there, the swarm wasn't a swarm so much as it was a hive in a hollow log and I wasn't prepared for that. In fact, I didn't have the skill, the knowledge, or the tools to take care of that. Today, I'm meeting with several other beekeepers and we're gonna see if we can get that hive out of that log. We drew quite a crowd today. We have several people here who are beekeepers who want to help on the process. Also some people from the city that want to just come out and see how the locals are helping to take care of the bees and manage uh, some of this amazing resource that we have in our bees, our pollinators. So yeah, let's see how we can get this thing done. Bees are wild animals. All right, so, uh, and they're not aggressors, they're defenders. But if we rile them up, they're going to protect the territory. That's their home. Uh, so, when a bee stings you, we're all going to swell up to some way or the other. Um, if you start feeling a tightness of your chest or shortness of breath, that means we need to do something about you. But if you get stung, it, it's going to hurt and yes, it will swell. Uh, what I generally do is uh, rub some bicarb or uh, baking powder on. And I've got a small tube of bicarb, you just get your finger, dip it in and rub it into where the sting is. What will also happen when the bee stings you, most of the time the sting will stay behind. Get rid of that sting as fast as you can because while it stays in there, it's constantly pumping in the venom into your fish. Take a sharp edge, credit card, knife, whatever it is, or if you haven't got anything in the back of a, a, a nog nail, and you scrape it off. Don't try and pinch it because you just squeeze more poison. Pinch it off, and then where the wound is, you're going to rub uh, bicarbonate soda, which is what I've got here, into it, um, and that will reduce the swelling and the sting. Generally what happens with a bee is, and in normal circumstances is when you start getting too close to them they'll come and buffet you and you'll feel if you're sensitive enough and calm enough you'll feel these little bangs where they actually headbutt you and they're warning you they're getting too close and they're getting a bit nervous in which case back off if you don't back off what the next thing they will do is they will prick you they won't sting you they'll prick you and it's yes it, it hurts it's a sting it's a strong sting but it, there's no poison going in it just hurts and that's the second warning you are already getting close the next one is we're going to sting you when a bee stings you he leaves some pheromones on the on that sting invite you all these other mates to come and say that's the target you to come and sting you in which case they're going to try uh, so if you get stung just move out the way don't run bees go after the fastest moving object if you run they go after you now just be calm and walk away because what will happen is it'll attract all the others and then we all become potential um, targets for the bees to sting so when you get away you want to rub that area again with a bicarb and a bit of spit or sweat or water to get rid of that pheromone that's out there, out there otherwise they're going to come back into you. Uh, don't swat the bees. That is the de decoration of war and they will come for you. Um, if you do find a lot of bees around you, get inside the car, roll up the windows with the bees with you. As soon as you get inside and you roll up the windows, the bees are going to feel cut off and they can't see the sun and they're going to leave you alone and go to the window. And then when they've left you alone, then you just crack the window just enough uh, for the bee to fly out and they will fly out of the car leaving you alone. Mm. So people think, you know, you don't want to get in the closed area. It's the windows around you in your car and the fact they feel claustrophobic inside there is going to cause them to do that. Really? So that's why, you know, bring the cars close by, have all but, I usually have all but one window wind open and I have the door open. So if I'm in trouble, I run, I get in, close it, wind up the window and the bees leave me alone. All right, the other thing to worry about in this environment where we are, it is hot. You start, you, if you start feeling thirsty, you've waited too long. Um, the idea is to constantly drink liquids, um, preferably just water. Uh, those of us that are going to be working in there will also have some isotonic drinks with us to replace the minerals and the things that we're going to sweat out, just to make sure we don't get heat exhaustion. Unfortunately, in the suits, it's like a sauna. We'll be absolutely dripping wet inside it. Um, the other things to think about is we don't have a problem here I doubt is snakes uh, in situations like this here in Texas I often find snakes they're not after the bees but they tend to be around the same area so we keep an eye open for those uh, with bees they're going to go after anything that resembles their natural enemies which are usually things like uh, raccoons, possums, uh, we don't have bears it's another one of theirs but they are after anything that's dark Anything that's high humidity, uh, hot air coming out with CO2 in it, they're after that. So what you want to do is, if the bees are around you, and see those of us are going to go in there, we're going to be covered in bees, is we tend to try and reduce our breathing to a very shallow, slow breath, 
and try and blow it back into our suits rather than back out to them because they're going to look for that. So you'll find the majority of the bees are going to be around our head. Um, if they find that there's a loose space like an ankle or a back of your suit, if you've got any half a suit, um, they're going to go in there and once they find it, <laughs> they can see everybody else where their spot is. Um, but most of the time they're going to be around our veils uh, looking after us and uh, looking at us. Um, what I'm going to do is say my role is not to exterminate the bees but to try and save them and relocate them to a place where we use them for education for kids, um, to repopulate areas that are no longer bees. So what I'll do when I go in there is um, I'm going to look for the uh, um, guard bees and suck them up with a vacuum cleaner. Now the vacuum cleaner we've got, we've reduced the suction down to around about 15 to 18 mile an hour wind that goes into the vacuum cleaner. Bees will fly around 15, they say up to 21, it depends on what reference you use. But if, you, if your suction is too hard, you burst the bee. Um, the bee doesn't have a blood vessels like we have, but they have air channels like our blood vessels. And the, the holes are very small. The air gets inside, you put them into a vacuum cleaner, and they just swell up and blow up. And then, uh, and as we get into this, if we wait long enough, the bees will start consuming honey because they know they're in danger. As soon as we put smoke in there, they're going to consume honey, which means the belly gets full of honey under normal pressure. You put them in a vacuum cleaner, which is reduced pressure, that honey snake gets big, they vomit all over, and now there's vomit everywhere, and then everything goes south after that. Yeah. So, we, you know, I'd like to have a high suction vacuum cleaner, but I kill the bees when I do it. So we have a low suction vacuum cleaner, which means it takes a bit longer to get the bees in there. Uh, if we have to use that. Uh, then um, we'll put the vacuum cleaner up close to the entrance, we'll give them a couple of puffs of smoke just to, just to try and calm the area. The smoke will let go, we let smoking in the area to try and reduce their pheromone communication. Uh, we might not need it, but if we do need it, uh, it takes too long to set it and get it going. We'd rather have it burning and we can use it at that time. We'll cut a slot into the log, after we support the log underneath, and then cut a slot into the side of it from the back side, away from the entrances. Guard bees and everywhere. we're protecting the entrances but not the back of the hive. So we'll go into the back of the hive, we'll cut a slot out big enough to see where the comb is and start extracting the comb from that way. The, um, the brood, which is their eggs, babies, larva, that we're really after that and that's very, very valuable to them. We'll get that, we'll mount it into frames which will go into the hives and then any of the honey we can save will be mounted into the frames. The honey we can't save because the comb is collapsing, it's hot, the wax is going to start collapsing on us. Uh, that we will take, put one side, and then what we do is uh, we either extract the honey or we, we freeze the comb and we feed that back to the bees in winter uh, so they've got enough stock to get through winter and before next, next spring. Um, and that's going to be our plan of attack. We should get um, there's somewhere between a third and 50% of the bees in the hive at the moment. The rest will be out foraging somewhere. Uh, so the best time to extract bees, uh, if you want to do that, is usually between 9.30 and about 11.30 in the morning. And then again around about 2 to about 5 in the afternoon. Again, that depends on how far they have to fly for food. Um, if they really have to fly far, far, then they only go for one trip out and they'll come back at about noon or 2 o'clock in the afternoon and stay the rest of the day at home. Um, but if it's close by, they usually have two trips out of the hive. And then we'll get those the forage, those out foraging at the moment. We won't get them now, but depending on how we build the hives with them, we might leave one hive here for tonight to so all the forage will go back into that hive. Um, if not, then uh, they will be around for about two days until they decide, right, there's no point staying around. They'll go and find another hive to go and live in. So um, we won't get them all, but we should get the majority of them. And if we don't get them, we've got about a two day window, in which case they will disappear, unless we want to come at night and try and get them. Uh, what else? Uh, I have a sharp edge and some baking soda on top of that plastic box right there. Okay. And a little plastic container. So if you do get stung, just lick your finger and stick it in the baking soda and rub it on. The, you know, first take use this to get it out because the bee sack will keep pumping, and more fast you can get it out, the better. And then baking soda will neutralize the acid and sting and it stops hurting pretty fast. Some people ask me, um, am I going to find the queen? I'm always looking for the queen. My success rate of finding a queen is very low. So the chance is no, I'm not deliberately going to look for her. What I will do is I'll look for bee behavior that indicates where the queen is. And the intention is to get her into one of the boxes or the vacuum cleaner. 
Uh, if I do that, the rest of the bees will follow. Um, if I don't do that, but somehow I miss her or she dies during the process of extraction, I'm hoping that I'll have eggs in there, in which case the bees will create their own queen. If I find that there are no eggs in there or I don't see anything, um, I'll put them in and then two days later I'll go back into the hive to see evidence of a queen and if I don't see any evidence then I'll have to provide her either with a frame of eggs so they can build their own queen or put in a, a queen from somewhere else. So not all the bees sting, which is good, good news. Uh, it's only the females that sting. That's why you've got to be kind. <laughs> <laughs> they have the edge over us. Uh, the workers generally will not sting. Uh, you can treat them quite badly, but as soon as you roll them or press them, they will sting you. So it's usually just the guard bees or, and some of the foragers that will come back that will do the stinging. So you'll find that initially in big extractions that I do, what I'm told this one is, uh, quite a bit of stinging, potential stinging up front, and then later on there's almost nothing after that, or very little. So that's what it is. We anticipate it will probably take us about three hours, three to four hours to get everything out and clean up after we're finished. Any questions? Nope. I should have put this suit on after the safety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, watch us. The bees are going to be more focused on us around there, so this should be a safe distance. Um, and then as, you know, within or after about being out there about an hour or so, you, if you want to come a bit close, you can do. Otherwise, uh, you stay back here. This what what we yeah. might do is, as we cut out the comb, we might bring a, a piece over here to show you what the drone, which is the male eggs, look like in larvae, and then the female, cool. what the eggs look like, uh, cool. what the honey looks like, caps and uncapped. So, uh, the idea what I try and do is use this as an educational opportunity as well for those who are coming to watch. So, once I think it's safe enough to come around, I get and the bees that are on the comb that I have are not aggressive or at least not defending anything, I'll bring them along to show you. Good. You're ready to go? So uh, ready to go. Or you can just stay inside. That's where I'll be. <laughs> Alright. I'm suited up. We got the uh, beekeeper helper over here suited up. Several people are gonna hang out in yes, the sir. vehicle to watch. Alright, All right, Mark. Can you get your smoker going? Yeah. This is the bee vac here. This is the be back be back professional here. Be back person. <laughs> right. The be back vacuum. The be vac vacuumer. Yeah. And the be vac vacuees. Here's the entrance. Presumably the entrance that they've been using uh, before the log fail, fail, not fail. And on the back side, where it was attached to the tree it is now a back entrance. It looks like maybe, maybe, maybe there was. All right, I think I'm irritating them by talking. I'm sure you are. <laughs> so we're getting all the equipment spread out, making a plan. Mr. Mark is the lead. This is the landowner and beekeeper, local beekeeper and helper. Some of the city folks are gonna be over here watching. They wanna see how the local beekeepers are handling this type of situation. Being out here in this situation helps me to understand that the bees probably at my own farm are not uh, so angry at me most of the time as they are my camera and maybe me talking because uh, Mr. Mark, the lead beekeeper here, was without suit for a while and messing around and they, he didn't even get hit by the bees. So I think it's uh, my presence with the camera and my voice probably. Let's get a full walk around here. This is the fallen limb on this big oak tree. The oak is being trimmed up because the property will be sold and this major branch is where the hive was living in a hollow part of that branch. So now firewood is being stacked up over here and this branch is laying down. It fell down off of the tree right here, came down 
hit the ground and is set there. The hive exists in this trunk here. Mr. Mark will be starting the generator. He's got uh, his BVAC, he's going to run off that generator. We have several chainsaws and electric saws. The goal is to get this log open, whatever Mark's plan is, to get this log open and get as much of the bees and the bee resources, the comb, out of that log as possible. 